All right. Um, hello. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here tonight for Dive Into Many Careers. Let me start by introducing myself. I'm Myra, and I'll be your host for tonight. I hope that you, you enjoy tonight's session and take away something useful from it. So tonight's session will be focusing on medicine, and joining us here tonight will be Thales University's very own Professor Lai, who is the Professor of Pediatrics and the Director of the Clinical Campus. He will be sharing with us here today information about the field of medicine and share his experience of how he got to be where he is today. So we'll start off the event tonight with a talk by Professor Lai, followed by a Q&A session at the end for everyone to clarify any doubts you may have. So feel free to type your questions in the slider link provided in the chat box as you proceed with the event. Kindly refrain from typing any questions in the Zoom chat box. Now, before we begin, make sure to read the housekeeping rules that will be posted in the chat box. And please abide by the rules or else we will not hesitate to remove you from the meeting. Without further ado, I'll pass the floor to Professor Light to begin his presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Myra and team, for organizing this talk. I'll be delighted to uh, share with you uh, some info on uh, medical course in general and also specifically uh, Taylor's uh, School of Medicine. Uh, I have not prepared a slide on my own journey, but I think I can readily uh, volunteer that up on you asking later on. Okay. So uh, what I thought I will share my I will share my slide here. I'm sorry, just uh, my slide here. I will spend the first few slides talking about medicine in general. I dive straight into the um, practical bits. Yeah, the hard facts first. Uh, the requirements uh, and the structure, and then I use Taylor School of Medicine to illustrate a fairly typical. Uh, medical course. Uh, medical course in Malaysia is quite standardized. So I use Taylor School of Medicine to, to illustrate that. And if you um, later have question on what makes uh, us a little bit different from others, I'm ready to answer that in the Q&A session. So uh, my slides are not designed to sell Taylor School of Medicine. Okay, this I my role is to uh, uh, to act as a general information provider on studying medicine and what happened roughly when you go into a medical school. Okay, let's uh, start. Can you, I hope you can see my slide rolling. Eh? If you can't, just let me know, okay? So uh, studying medicine, what kind of uh, business it is? What's, uh, how tough it is? What are the scenery along the road? in your studying medicine and practicing. So I share a little bit. Now to study medicine, you have to go into a school of medicine. And there isn't, uh, so far, isn't such an option as homeschooling for studying medicine. Maybe in the future, it will happen. So for now, you have to go into a dedicated university campus and uh, spend much of your time hands-on doing hospital study. 
uh, in the later part, I will explain a little bit. Now, first come first thing first, huh? all of you, a very practical thing. What kind of um, achievement you have to uh, attain uh, before coming into school or medicine? You know, it's very practical. Huh? Maybe you or your parent want to know. Now, this uh, entry requirement is not set by tailors. It's set by the Malaysian Medical Council. Okay, uh, Ma Malaysian Medical Council. And this is the standard entry requirement. Uh, I just use A level and IB to illustrate. Uh, there are many, many different types of pre U exam. Uh, you know, some of Australian matriculation. You can find the info readily on the website. So uh, now, tailors use exactly the entry requirement for Malaysian Medical Council. You find that some other universities, they use their own requirement, which is higher, higher than that set. You cannot be lower than the MMC standard. So we currently stick to the standard. Why? Because later I'll show you we have uh, some other means of uh, selecting students as well beside the standard. So the, the baseline uh, level is uh, you have to have Bs. Yeah, you see A level, taking in biology is a must, uh, chemistry is a must, and between physics and maths, you get a B and you are set. You can come in. Now, the variation of that is ABC in either of these or AAC. So it's like an average of B. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, that's the standard A level. And if you get IB, you know, you can read here. Um, I think most of you uh, who are nearing uh, graduation from pre-U college will know this a lot better right, than uh, others. You know, the minimal 30 points, yeah, including science and maths. Now, we are still fairly, uh, how to say, traditional in a way. It's unlike Australia and America and in some cases in UK. You can have totally non biological non-science background and can enter medicine, you know. You, uh, you, if you study mathematics mainly and commerce and pre-U, in those countries, you can use your result to go into medicine, not yet in Malaysia, because it's the Malaysia Medical Council standard. Like we have to have some science. Uh, okay. So that is roughly the entry requirement. Uh, you have to have some English. You know, most this least of your problem uh, most of the time okay these are the baseline requirement now uh, we have an interview uh, more like a chat uh, it isn't a it's even less formal than this you know as uh, in the past couple of years we use online interview and uh, we use the face to face just a casual chat in one of the rooms mainly um, to it says satisfactory performance. It's kind of it's very scary word. We we mainly want to help you to assess whether you have the you have the character that's required at, uh, to go into medicine and be so the life as a student and a doctor will be manageable to you. So we are kind of uh, uh, shedding lights. Uh, on your behalf. So we will talk to you. Uh, these are the basic thing, not only this, we, we assess whether you've done your work and understanding what you are going to go through, medical undergraduate program. You know roughly what career is like. We don't, of course, we haven't been there. We don't expect you to know fully yeah, your motivation and your thinking. We may actually uh, Gives you some fun question to solve, <laughs> to think about how you think, okay? And of course, communication skill, the way you talk to us is very important. Uh, yeah, communication skills, you know that, uh, just to cite you an example, uh, it, a lot of the time, the patients sue the doctor, think they are not a good doctor. Uh, they, they, they manage their case badly to the extent that they sue them. Now, 70% of this is because they don't talk properly communication. So it's quite important. It's not that the doctor cut the wrong leg or anything like that. They don't talk properly. Don't give the proper info. So communication is quite important. 
Okay, so we interview. Now, this is standard. This is not just tailored. I think most medical school, I, I'm, I wouldn't vouch at all, but most medical school have some form of interview to assess what kind of person you are, whether you're suitable for this course or not. Okay. Um, now, one practical practical thing, we included this slide because uh, I've been asked many times by a uh, new uh, student who, who are potential applicant who are coming in. So what about Basel Malaysia? Do you need a uh, qualification or not? Now, the situation is this. You don't need any BM to enter into medical school. I can say for tailors and all private medical school you don't. Public one, I, I haven't checked. Uh, I think may or may not need. You don't. You can, you can come in based on your uh, pre result, but for a Malaysian to work in the Malaysian system, you will need a Bahasa Malaysia, huh? you will need a pass at the SPM level. So, what does that mean? That means if you haven't got a pass at SPM level, Bahasa Malaysia, you can come in, there's no problem, but you have to, in the five years of medical course, you have to get it done. Yeah, you have to get it done. Um, we have a few examples of that and they set a BM as a kind of private candidate, got through and worked, uh, no, no issue. Okay, so just for clarification. Now, this doesn't obviously doesn't apply for a non-Malaysian uh, students. Okay, if there's any non-Malaysian here, you want to know um, the situation later, I'm happy to answer your question. Okay, what's the career like? I'm drawing a very simple graph on the career progression of a uh, doctor. Okay. Now you study MBBS, basically it's a short form of the most common short form of the medical course. No? Uh, so, yeah, so uh, medical bachelor, bachelor of surgery and some courses in Malaysia give it a name as MD, medical doctor. They are the same thing, okay? So you get your primary degree Currently, uh, for Malaysian, you serve as a house officer or houseman for two years. Yeah, mandatory two years minimum. Some will be extended. Yeah, but the minimum is two years. After two years, you become a medical officer. At that time, you are more senior and you are looking out for uh, specialization. Yeah. So, so, yeah, this is the time where you are kind of. Uh, you are more senior than houseman and you are looking for a few that you want to study. So two to three years on that. Now, after two to three years, you may decide that you do not want to specialize. You will go out of the government system and become a general practitioner. Now, having said that, there is a specialization path for general practitioner. Yeah? You, the usual GP, you go to the... Um, you go to GP clinic, you can see some GP are actually specialist family physician. You call that family physician. So they are a specialist. You know, there's such a specialty. So some of them get specialist uh, degree and some don't, but they all function as family physician. Okay, You can go out and do that or you can go further towards the path of specializing. Uh, that involves some form of postgraduate study. Two main form in Malaysia, roughly two main form. One is the local university master's program and the other one roughly is the Royal College. You take the uh, Royal College examination. If you pass, you become a specialist. That's option two. Option one is you enroll in the master's program uh, by the local university. That is a fixed program of four years. After you graduate, you become a specialist. Okay. So now, when you become a specialist, the life may not end, you know, may not end, you know. So you may become a what we call sub specialist. Right. So you can see a medical student, houseman, medical officer, general practitioner, specialist, and sub specialist. What are the sub specialists? So, for example, my few uh, pediatric children's doctor, right? Children's doctor, you call it a specialist. Now, I um, 
on top of having a children's doctor's qualification, I'm a neonatologist. Anyone know what it is? I want to give you a prize, but uh, I haven't got time. Neonatologist means um, the branch of children's doctor that deal with newborn baby, premature baby, a tiny one, huh? not enough. You know, they they tiny, they are premature, they they can't breathe properly. That kind of NICU. So neonatology that's my field. So sub specialist. Some uh, my uh, my colleague sub specialize in heart, pediatric cardiology, heart or small children. Some specializes in brain. Yeah, urologist. The same is called sub specialization. Now, uh, you the same thing with adult. Yeah, you, know, you can be a physician specialist, uh, medical doctor, physician. But adult cardiologist, urologist, and so on. Okay, sub specialist. There are plenty of it. Yeah? Plenty of field to sub specialize. So you can see we're getting narrower and narrower. So that explains why some of the colleagues don't like to go narrow. They want a broad kind of enriching experience. So they go into family medicine. Okay, so uh, with that, I will turn to specifically onto our school, a Taylor School of Medicine program. Now, hopefully using this, a Taylor School of Medicine um, to, for you to gain insight into what are the facilities and equipment in one uh, medical school. Uh, and also in some cases, hopefully can kind of reflect uh, what's unique in our school. Okay, So our school's uh, program is called MBBS. It's like many other medical school. You know, um, when a medical school is being set up, there are a lot of standards that we have to follow. Yeah, The Malaysian Qualification Agency, Malaysian Medical Council, you can see, come and audit very tightly. So they, um, we cannot sway too much. We cannot be very creative about it. Yeah? So we have to adhere to certain standards because training doctor is no small fee. You know, there's so much to pack in. So we are expected to function very rigidly within that standard. But within that still, we can, we can have our own uh, strengths uh, and unique features. Now, uh, this is just to show you that Taylor's is in World Directory or Medical School. What does that mean? That means you can take any um, uh, exam like USMLE to go to the US. You can you have to, to take USMLE, you have to be one of the school that is in the world directory of medical school. Yeah. That's one of the exam and also Canadian entrance exam. We are not directly recognized by um US, by Canada, like most medical school, all medical school in Malaysia, but we are, are recognized uh, in, in taking this exam and and practicing that we pass the exam. Okay, so uh, next, uh, just over an overview of Taylor's uh, medical program. I would, I will divide the five-year program, which is standard program, into two phases. Now, uh, two phases. Most school divide that way. First one is phase one, or what we call a preclinical phase. Yeah, preclinical means you have not gone into hospital training. Now, phase two means clinical phase. So you most of your training are done on-site, workplace-wise, hands-on in the hospital. So in Taylor's, the first two years are preclinical. You study, uh, build on the basic knowledge. For those of you who uh, opted to come to Taylor's, you will be studying in Lakeside. And most of you are in college anyway, so you won't move. You know, the first two years of medicine in Lake, Lakeside campus you focus on core knowledge. You have to have a certain level of core knowledge. So when you see patient, you understand what's going on. You can even think and think of how to make the patient better using your knowledge. Yeah? So uh, basic core knowledge. I will illustrate a little bit uh, after that. Uh, you have an exam at the end of year two. Uh, this is, uh, you, you are expert in exam really. So it's one of those exams, right? So, and, and after you pass the exam at year two, you go into clinical phase. Now you change location a little bit. Now some of the other medical school you have to travel from KL to other places, you know, East Malaysia or JB, but for Taylor's you travel from a lake to a river. About 45 minutes. The lake is lakeside, the river is Sungai Bulu. It's the river. So that's about 45 minutes. Just uh, next to the hospital. 
we are fortunate to uh, be given to be affiliated with Hospital Sungai Buloh. Now, good and bad. The good thing is is a very good hospital, tertiary hospital, with all the tertiary specialty, and not so good one in the last two years. It's been the sole COVID hospital in the country, so we had problem accessing, but uh, we are very lucky. Uh, in now we are fully the students are fully accessible now they are uh, they are seeing all sorts of cases you know uh, and they get the benefit of first hand experience uh, in covid and uh, they don't see covid cases but they have they heard talks about covid so we are very lucky in that aspects so on phase 2 you come into hospital but we you also we also have a campus the clinical campus just next to the hospital and you have you learn there and uh, together we're learning in the hospital now uh, there are exams in between but your next big one is at the end year 5 once you pass the exam you're a doctor now you get the mbbs certificate okay phase 1 and phase 2 uh, to put it simply yeah phase 1 as i say a lakeside campus Basic sciences, yeah. What are the basic sciences? You know, you 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 in college you learn these are these are nothing new to you, right? So anatomy, biochemistry, you learn a bit of each, yeah. You know? And in medicine, you take things a little bit further in some discipline, yeah. Anatomy, biochemistry, pathology, some of it take things a bit further because you need to know now more advanced now, as it applied to patient care, yeah. Hopefully, none of this is very foreign to most of you. Eh? Now, one thing about Taylor's is we don't, uh, we don't have a anat anatomy subject week. We don't have biochemistry subject semester. Nothing like that, you know. How we learn is this. No next slide. Uh, here, show you how we learn. Taylor's uh, uh student, we learn it in system. So uh, so here we have hematology and immunology. It combines, you know, it combines pathology, some biochemistry, a bit of physiology, you know, and uh, yeah, we we have this integrated curriculum where we focus on the system. Cardiovascular, a bit of anatomy, physiology, and hematology also. Uh, I mean, anatomy, physiology, a bit of biochemistry. Yeah, you get a bit. So, just like in real life, when you see patient. Yeah, you, I've told you previously uh, a few minutes ago, you have a specialty cardiologist, right? You have hematologist, you have respiratory medicine. So you want to approximate that mode of seeing patient. So from right from year one, you learn in terms of system. So you get the consistency when you move to clinical block and when you go into your practice. Yeah, we don't have an anatomist, biochemist or things like that in your in your. Um, in your in the hospital practice, but we have this, okay. So that's how we learn, and we have all uh, other uh, subjects as well: behavioral sciences, public health. You know, it's a specialty. Epidemiology is also a specialty, and we have a, a moderate amount of uh, research in there. So for some of you who are interested in research, you can take things further. Okay, so uh, now. There are a few principles that we use which are fairly standards. I think most medical school have been uh, asked to adopt now. We have integrated program. I would say Taylor's is has this mode of program integrated. I've shown you different discipline come together right from year one, which is something I would say not all the medical school uh, uh, have incorporated. You know, we, we daringly do that from year one. And uh, system based, I've told you, approximating the uh, how the doctors practice, the specialties are arranged, and also um, student take charge quite a lot. Now you find that for those of you in the college, you um very youth friendly kind of setting, isn't it? Youth friendly. You have X space. You have online component. Well, we're constantly improving, trying to make it very easily accessible to you. Now the same thing in uh, in medical course. So a lot of content, uh, it's quite a, we have a certain degree of flexibility. You lead, whereas us, we are facilitating. We use our experience to guide you and tell you, you know, steer you in the right direction. A very uh, uh, few example 
of uh, standing up and teaching you like a classroom uh, manner. St those components still needed in some subjects. Yeah, it's not totally out, but uh, where possible, we we uh, kind of implement a student-centered learning. Now, being trained in Taylor's College, most of you, I think that's uh, you um, towards becoming an expert on that. Now, we have all the modes, lectures, practical, uh, dissection, anatomy. I'll show you the anatomy lab. Uh, most of the time, we use problem-based learning. Not sure whether you, you use that in college. Uh, we use that quite a lot in uh, medical course. And they have dedicated communication skill module. And also, even in Lakeside and preclinical, we are um, teaching you dedicated weekly, at least weekly session on how to examine the heart, examine the hand. So by the time you come to clinical school, you won't be lost. At least you have some experience. Okay, now there are a few, a few pictures. So this is an anatomy lab. For those of you, uh, I don't know whether you have visited. Uh, if you haven't, you should go. Uh, you know, anatomy lab, we dissect corpses. Uh, right? Corpses. Um, well, more, more medical schools dissect corpses, but our corpses are especially, our specimen, I don't use that word, specimen are especially process from Germany. So they actually looks almost unreal. This is process to help learning. Why? Because you can see the muscle fiber very finely. So you can recognize it very clearly. And it's uh, German made. And we, we renew that uh, every so often you can see here. And it, uh, it's easy to use and uh, it helped learning compared to the uh, standard kind of uh, specimen. Now we have some specimen here. Skeleton, I think this skeleton is uh, some uh, real whole set skeleton. Uh, when I was learning, uh, uh, I was training in Australia, Queensland, I, I, had a, I had a real skull in my room. I had to memorize all the features every day, you know, looking at it. I think this skull is plastic one. So not, not so much fun. Uh, yeah? It looks real. Yeah. Now we have specimen anatomy museum. Some of the specimen preserved, not so easy to dissect. They are preserved. You can learn them. You can go in anytime. You know. So these are the specimen. All the uh, essential parts of the human being uh, are there in the anatomy museum. Uh, pathology museum. You can see slides. Yeah? Small cells. You know. You can. Uh, you can. Uh, small specimen. You can see. Uh, yeah, all sorts, yeah. and you can, you can, like the table show, you can discuss, yeah, using case scenario, you know, uh, some, some, uh, there's a patient who has some illness and uh, the doctor had the surgery and dissected, uh, uh, resected some of the specimen and you can, you can talk about it. So it's a setting for you to learn that way. Now, this is a multidisciplinary lab. Uh, what do we use it for? Um, microbiology, we look at cells, we look at bacteria, and look at also pathology specimen. Now the microscope here. I'm sure it's not new, nothing new. Uh, college, you have some of those as well, but we use it a lot more intensively in medical course. Okay, so clinical skills is like a hospital ward where you go in, it's a hospital bed, and uh, we get patients in quite regularly. Some are real patients, some are what we call standardized or simulated patients. Basically, they're actors. You know, you take their story and you examine them and practicing your uh, clinical skills. Yeah, this is all in Lakeside. Yeah? And this is a typical problem based learning room. You all have it, and uh, I'm sure you go up this, I think, somewhere in the seventh floor, sixth, seventh floor. E6, E7, I may be wrong now, things tend to move a bit. Okay. Okay, so basically that is preclinical phase. In clinical phase, you call phase two, three years, 60% of your time is spent in clinical phase, learning, 
through going to the hospital. Eh? You are based in clinical school and I say, and you use hospitals. Now, we, the main hospital that we, uh, our student learns is hospitals, I have told you, but we are uh, using as well a district hospital, Hospital Bentong. You know where Bentong is? When you go around Pahang, to the left, Genting Highland, you don't go up to the highland, you go straight in, and then that's the, uh, to cross the border to Pahang, the Bentong. It's very nice, charming district hospital uh, where it's, the atmosphere is different. So we use we use that hospital also. yeah. And also, apart from that, we use a health district clinic where you see um, complex primary cases and uh, community medicine. Yeah, also, a different clinic that we use. A wide variety of experiences. See, this is a snapshot of Hospital Sungai Bulo. It's a big tertiary hospital. It's renowned a uh, national center for two things, infectious disease, hence it's designated COVID hospital, infectious disease center of Malaysia, and also neurosurgery center, two center. Yeah, apart from these two, there are all the specialty available um, that serve as a regional referral center. So the, our main hospital is this, and our clinical school is just about 10 minutes walk, about 1.2 kilometers away. And Bentong Hospital is a hospital we use. You can see, you can contrast between the two hospitals. Yeah, it's a district hospital, 150 beds. Uh, Sungai Bulo has about 700 beds, 600 over. And this is the bottom is the new block of Hospital Bentong. I myself go to Hospital Bentong once a week uh, before the pandemic going to resume soon to actually see patient there to do service. And so we do get involved in clinical service. Now, this is the clinical school. Now, some of you have been here, All right, We um, It's a colonial building, very charming and nice. You go inside, we use the second and third floor. It's very different from other clinical school. You can see in other medical school. Welcome to come. I'm based here. Yeah, you know, I I'm not based in Lakeside. I'm based here, so uh, yeah, uh, I'll show you a different picture. So these are what's inside the clinical school. This is a clinical skill suite where you actually you go to hospital and see patient, but you need to consolidate some of the skills, isn't it? Now this is a specimen, so there are room for you to specimen for you to actually practice and revise. Yeah, clinical skill. This is a actually a full size man a very sophisticated specimen called a uh, semen where the heart rate will change depends on how you resuscitate and will suddenly sit up and all these things so heart will suddenly stop you know uh, all these things this can simulate the whole resuscitation scenario you know um, it can be remote control in a control room so it will be fun when you come this is a dedicated library. At Lakeside, you know, you have to share library with uh, everybody else, isn't it? It's, uh, here, in, in Sungai Bulo, it's all yours. Nobody, yeah? It's all for clinical students. All yours. Building is yours. Parking, all yours. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, parking is free. Uh, so, if, yeah, you can come around and we will show you. And this is uh, part of a clinical skill suite. You see, actually, a patient ward. And this is the, um, I think the eye specimen, I'll show you a few uh, eye specimen of the, the, the student using ophthalmoscope to look inside the eye, the retina uh, findings there. You can see this, uh, this is a real lady giving birth. Right? It's, it's, it's already eat the, 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 the uh, simulation mechanism down there where the baby can come out. You can simulate a difficult birth or a normal birth. Here. Yeah. Now, this is part of the clinical school. You can see this is your um, predecessor's uh, masterpiece. You can guess what it is. It's a tree, and this is a heart here. Two hands holding a heart, and tree. Very creative. So, you need not lose your creativity when you join the School of Medicine. They are all there are lots of empty walls for you to exercise your talents, yeah, still. When you come around, yeah. So there are uh, room for you to hang out, uh, for you to relax. Yeah, this is the third floor where all the classrooms are. Yeah. Now a little bit, uh, I think I'm 
a few more slides that I'm done. I think uh, it's a mainly picture. Now we have a uh, ceremony that we are very, uh, we take hard to preserve. Now when um, the student move from preclinical phase to clinical, we want to recognize that you have overcome one big hurdle and also you're stepping into a different territory. You start becoming like a doctor. So we treat it very seriously. We uh, have a white coat ceremony where the student who just step into the third year will be donned the white coat. There is an oath taking. Now there is a ceremony uh, next Friday for the newest batch that's coming in, batch 19. We have graduated 13 batches. Uh, batch 19 is coming in next uh, Friday. So we really look forward to that. Now it's a very good moment. Right, donning the white coat, signifying that you're given added responsibility. Your steps are different. You need to step in the hospital learning with all gratitude in your mind every day. Uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the symbols that, that sets you uh, going. Yeah, white coat ceremony. Okay. Uh, this is tell you uh, your society life won't end when you join medical school, you know. You will still have plenty of life, you know. Uh, you have student council throughout the university. You, most, a lot of you are in pre-medical uh, societies and you can continue you know, from pre to the actual proper. There's a Taylor's University Medical Society. Uh, essentially, you have the same activities. That recently, uh, last year, there is a tail, uh, surgical society being set up. Taylor's University Surgical, you know, the, you know, the different room or activity, but they are kind of, they get along well, different, managed by different people, but uh, the, the, also uh, part of our student body. Now there is Fitness Alliance, Tucson Fat Club. I don't know whether it's still active or not, but there's such a club, you know, yeah. These are some pictures of the activities, you know. Yes, yeah, some you know, Sungai Bulo provide you a lot of uh, rooms to go around hunting food, things like that, and then doing exercise. Yeah, we are very active here, lots of activities um, to keep you active. Yeah, um, community medicine, world TV is a kind of regular occurrence, uh, AIDS Day, World AIDS Day as well. Uh, so, lots of activities sports days, you need not lose touch with your life. Also with your lakeside life, uh, you have opportunity to come back to lakeside to to uh, to intermingle with uh, your friend in lakeside. Okay, World TB Day, some activities, a student uh, doing community project. And next week, uh, not next week, this Saturday and Sunday, uh, the TUM student will be doing a community program to help the urban in need uh, in Taman Sri Mutiara in uh, a so I'll be part of the doctor screening I don't know whether you you are involved or not but uh, the tombs are people are involved so it's ongoing activity we can't wait you know in the pandemic all the tombs people are kind of uh, really deprived of the um the activities of doing good so they can't wait now they going out to do some good world meteorological day uh, this i think some time ago we have on and off new initiative yeah this is one of the health campaign that is a, a bit same like what we're going to go through this saturday and sunday to some night uh, we have annual dinner uh, suspended due to pandemic i think this year they are discussing whether to have it on or not okay Sports Day, annual occurrence, World AIDS Day, as I say, and we go some, we go and on and off uh, different different places, including uh, Orang Asli settlement in uh, Slim River, Perak, and also deep in the Titiwangsa, you know, uh, to screen them and to monitor their health. Yeah, these are all different occasions. Uh, we have a, a affiliation with different uh, medical center. We do send you to some clinic, medical center. So you have a different kind of view on uh, on uh, different uh, mode of practicing. Okay, just to tell you that we graduated, you know, 17 students, our very first batch in 2015, 17, all graduated. 
yeah our graduates since then we have had uh, this is batch one we have just sent off batch 13 in march and we have graduated 400 uh, doctors about 400 yeah this is the first batch you know it all looks nice isn't it like this, what happened when you graduated everyone everyone loses weight Okay, so that's uh, my slides. Yes, I hope uh, it's been okay. So i happy to take any question yeah, or any comment or anything. All right. So thank you, Professor Lai, for that informative presentation. So I hope that everyone found this sharing session useful and that everyone they took away something from it. So I found it really knowledgeable and helpful to have a clear pathway for a future career in medicine. So now without further ado, we can move on to our Q&A session. So everyone, the Slido link will be sent in the chat box and you guys can type your questions there. Okay, so Professor Lai on the first question, so what made you decide to pursue medicine as a career? Ah, uh, great question, this one. <laughs> but how much time do I have? <laughs> no, I just actually, um, I didn't pick medicine in my career, to be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't, not because I didn't like medicine. How to tell you, I better bear it all to you, right? I'm not an ambitious person. I wasn't, oh, son, don't dare to go. Uh, what do I do? Actually, um, I um, after finishing my SBM, I went to Singapore to do uh, A-level under ASEAN scholarship. I went to Singapore and uh, when it's time to choose university, I had a... Uh, in some way, I'm quite idealistic. I actually uh, choose chemical engineering. I spent three months in National University yes. of Singapore choosing chemical engineering. Why? Because I'm very fascinated with kind of uh, frontier science research and kind of things. I thought chemical engineering can get me a pathway to genetics, you know, kind of. So I went in. Now, about two months into the course, my uh, aunt, back in Malaysia, say there is this scholarship, you know, Australian government scholarship, where um, you are allowed to choose a few courses and uh, just go for it. She picked medicine for me. She picked medicine. Eh? So I got it, you know. So I got medicine, University of Queensland. Now that scholarship was full scholarship. I don't have to pay a single cent and I get some living allowance. So I say, why not? But I went, I went to train at, at the University of Queensland, and actually, you know, um, I never looked back since. All right, so I I went. Uh, I found that this course is so enriching. It has everything I need. It also, I mean, it has more than the chemical engineering, uh, component. I actually study life. I went there to study life, and it's more than a, a, a narrow aspect and. You know, many years down the road, I, I'm in touch with some of the things that I set out to, I dream of doing like research, you know, a bit of genetics, uh, research and even some of the machine learning stuff. So yeah, what made me decide, so I didn't decide, but I like it, I won't look back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, everyone. So, okay, thank you, Professor Lai, for that. Moving on to the next one, why pediatrics and what made you choose to pursue pediatrics? Well, wow, this is another question. <laughs> That's uh, well, wow, you're great, great in asking questions. Another um, another uh question that make me bear my all. Also, uh, 
when did I choose peace? This is the this is uh, maybe the more kind of informative question. I picked pediatric in my second year. So I want to do peace in my second year. Why was I that set on doing peace after second year? I didn't like I didn't like all the other few. No, oh. uh, because I think I am very a casual person. I said I didn't want to think too much. I, I actually love children. I love kids. Well, uh, after so many years come and realize loving kids, it helps doing peace, but it's not probably not the essential attribute to make you do peace. Uh. Loving kids is good, make you a nice, good person, enjoy life, but uh, not necessarily a, a kind of advantage for you to do peace. But I love kids, so I did uh, peace. I choose uh, peace and ophthalmology eyes. In second year, I'm never, I haven't, I haven't gone to those posting yet. I didn't know what they are, but I just say, do bits of thermology lah. Second year, of course, in second year, I started doing some embryology, how human develop. Good, it's a good thing to do. So I just stick to, don't want to think too much. So I'm not the type of person who drive and so I must do peace. I that set on doing peace. No, it's, it's just, just, just try it. Now. What made me then narrow down to peace and uh, instead of ophthalmology? Uh, in my clinical years, uh, I have I, I studied ophthalmology as well as peace and uh, uh, in pediatric posting, I love it. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, has everything that I expected. What was the thing that I expected? You deal with kids. Kids come in uh, to the hospital. They they don't come in to, to have fun on, you know, they come in, they are crying out, you know, they're very miserable. But one thing about kids, they recover very fast. After one day, after two days, you see them running around, uh, uh, you know, running around happy, very satisfying, satisfying. So that's, I said, and also the next thing is, kids is, um, in kids, we tend to, we are kind of, unspoken as unspoken code we're morally obliged to spend time sit down with the parent and talk to them and i really like that uh, we are not so busy blindly just clocking patient and uh, uh, managing them so that made me quite comfortable in peace now what made me choose peace or ophthalmology this is my personal experience uh, it's just me uh, now in ophthalmology i find uh, also uh, 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 exposed to ophthalmology posting. In ophthalmology, you're sitting in front of a very highly sophisticated machine, looking at people's eyes. Very elegant, very sophisticated, precise technique. Those of you who like that, that's for you. For me, I say, I spend the whole day looking at people's eyes, just doing the sophisticated thing. I don't really, you know, have get to appreciate the whole person. And peace, I appreciate the whole person and more, you know, the small kids and the family, the surrounding. Often we all we often have to think about the family. Our patient is not only the small little one, it's their family, their community. So uh, in my limited uh, time in ophthalmology, I feel, felt that I didn't get that. It's a very elegant thing. You know, so I think I have a clear preference now. So I say I stick to pediatrics. Okay, that's still a second question. I better move on. Eh? I, maybe maybe I, I, read, I read it myself. I can see. Eh? So you save your work. Eh? Actually, so, I have a follow-up to the question just now. It's like, do you have any uh, advice on how to pick what you like choose to specialize in in the future? Okay, very great question, Myra. I was going to tell you anyway. Now, <laughs> now most of you when asked what would you like to do you have a vision isn't it you have an ideal oh sir so, um serving the world serving the needy you know you see some kind of uh, a picture or video of a doctor serving and you feel like that's good that's cool that's good or even uh, that is very uh, meaningful uh, that is one aspect but what my advice to you is what specialty you decide will be the, the specialty will stick with you in the majority of your life, you know, day in, day out. You have to decide, you have the experience when choosing specialty, whether 
your life in that specialty is not only your work. When you come back your life, are you comfortable or not? So that I can only, uh, you can only experience it. So what I advise you to do is really take your time to, uh, when you are rotated to different specialty, really pay attention to your own life, whether you are comfortable or not. You wake up feeling like that this morning, uh, the manner that you arrange your life, you eat your breakfast, you go towards the manner of your workplace, the manner of your work, the people that you deal with, the day-to-day -day things, even going to toilet, showering, come back, whether you are okay or not with that day-to-day -day life. Yeah. So uh, more than the, the kick that it gives you is the day-to-day -day life that you experience. Now, some of you may find it no difference. You know? So then you can uh, you can pick the one that gives you the high, most kick. You know? Some of you uh, find that it that is a difference. For me, in my experience of have doing surgical uh, post posting versus medical posting, I find that medical posting give me a kind of a more stable life, more stable life versus surgical posting. Not necessarily because it's less busy, but it give me the life that I feel more comfortable. Yeah. So that is the advice I will give you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, may I move on? May I know yeah. if BM is the only subject required in SPM? Uh, uh, to go for housemanship is Jara uh, uh, we have in in I was truncated a bit you know uh, in, in terms of entry requirement there is a science also component right in, in SPM level on top of the A level and if you see you know now in if you are if you're only asking you're asking the generic subject right yes BM is the only one we don't need Sajara to serve in public service uh, at least in medical uh, service uh, in hospital we uh, the, the what we call the SPA Surohan Jaya Awam they only need your BM and it's a pass uh, in SPM yeah okay now is medicine really as hard as people make it sound well uh, what makes things hard uh? The two components, right? That make things what make things hard is the subject itself and it's you. Eh? If you're not focused, everything can be hard, you know. If you're focused, if you have a group of good people to study with, nothing is hard. So um it, well, is does it is it as hard as people make it sound? Hardest, yes, possible that people think it's a dark uh discipline. Well, that reflects their attitude to it and that may reflect what is going on in their life when they say this. So, um, well, I regret going to studying medicine. You know, I'm not, a, I told you, I'm not a very dead set, ambitious person studying medicine. Did I regret? No, it's, it's the best thing. Did I have a lot of time going uh, going out and doing things? Not much. Uh, do I have? Do I have zero time? No, I have time. Yeah, depends on how you make use of it. So it depends on how, what you mean by heart. Yeah. Okay, next one. Important question. What makes Taylor's and BBS course stand out among others offered in Malaysia? Right. I have to be very careful here. Uh not not because I'm just, undo modesty thing because uh, you know when we say something stands out uh, sometimes we find other schools so they say the same thing but slightly different now the in terms of hardware the course content MQA dictates that all the medical course are more or less need to follow a pre-specified content now that doesn't mean we're 100% uh, the same we are slightly different now now i'm going to spell out to you now how this tailors different compared to most other medical school a few points here now in tailors we have two elective period elective means you can spend three or four weeks doing whatever you like yeah, yeah. one is clinical elective where most medical school have you go to some other hospital doing a specialty that you like so that one nothing special on top of that, we have a non-clinical elective, a short period where you can go and do 
whatever you like, but our requirement is had to be non-medical. You can go and learn dancing, cooking, writing novel, learning karate, going to Myanmar and Laos to do humanity work, and going to a vet to learn how to care for a dog or cat, like that. Learning ice skating, you have to let us know. So we, we look, uh, we also get a shock. Uh, shock uh, good, uh. So, you know, it's an it's a expansion on your life skill. We really like that. So it's one thing. Uh, another thing is you, you go into our clinical school, you can see how uh, we are different. You know, the building speaks for itself. It's, uh, it's uh, different to most sanitized version of all other medical school, right? Yeah, so we are youth friendly. Our design is like that. So, uh, we design based on medical students' feedback. Yeah, we custom make all the spaces, and the student can study after hours there. They 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 say they're comfortable with that. So our schools are are custom made by students, and we can say that like, Not many clinical school have that kind of advantages. Yeah. The third advantage is our intake. Yeah. Small. Still small. It's going up now. Still small. Uh, so we remember all the students. Now, it's, um, I tell you one thing. We have to be modest about it. I'm not going to trumpet my uh, our Taylor's achievement. Uh, but the fact speaks for itself. Now, we send students uh, since five, six years ago, send students for Grand Medical Challenge competition you know, uh, uh, in IMU, where it's all over the world, medical school comes. You know, we have consistently get, get into final, you know, second prize, the first runner-up, second runner-up. I think we have never won. Uh, we second, I think we won once and second runner-up consistently. We are surprised by that. We are a new medical school. Why, eh? So good. We beat IMU, you know, many uh, in several occasions. Uh, we we um beat most of the medical school here. Why is that? So uh, now I I we 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 spoke to our student. Students also say, oh well. The one of the reason is uh, maybe we get more attention by the lecturer. We are small cohort, you know, compared to some other school. You know, so. Yeah, the fact speaks for itself. And you know that last two years, we won our student with the School of Engineering, won the Grand Medical Challenge organized by National University of Singapore, where they invite students all over the world to have medical innovation. Two of our medical students last year won the first prize and this year have a different project and uh, uh, registered second prize. So consistent. So the fact speaks for itself. I so you you say what are the what are the um other unique feature you know small intake and those other things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So any advice? I hope I hope this is okay. So uh, next, any advice for those who are still unsure if they should pursue medicine? Okay. Now um what you need to do now is to talk to First, you talk to your, uh, you're in college, I presume Taylor's college, you talk to your seniors uh, who are in medicine, first and second year. And also, if possible, if you want, I can talk to you personally in more detail. I can arrange the students in the medicals, in the clinical years to talk to you. I can also uh, arrange, uh, uh, get some perspective from the practicing doctor. And you get a lot of... Uh, I don't know whether I should say this YouTube um, so doctors doctors reflection, but not all of them are the average type. You know, if you feel strongly enough things to make a YouTube, it's either very good or very bad. So, uh, but you do take those into account, and if you have a family relative who are doctors, uh, talk to them. Uh, I, at the end, uh, at the end. Will you go very wrong if you if you um find that you don't like medicine and you actually you chosen it? Uh, medical degree is good for many other things. Yeah, you know? I haven't I haven't spent time exploring alternative how you get a degree. It's, you know, you learn character strengthen is good for other things. You no, know? as a, 
The next thing is maybe you're worried hearing some news about some negative thing about some doctor, right? They took their own life and all these things. Now, these are very uh, exceptional cases. Now, all I can say is, we, no, I don't have the in-depth data. I can say is that these doctors are not prepared, are not prepared. Uh, <clears throat> if you are prepared, then you are maybe much more comfortable. This is less likely. Now, anyway, you, if you treat it as a journey, it's a very fulfilling journey. Okay, based on your own experience, do you feel the students at Taylor's are more competitive or collaborative? Are they a nasty bunch or are they a nice bunch, are you asking, isn't it? Right. I have, uh, I told you, I thought, uh, thought while I was in the UK, uh, I was one of the students in Australia. I taught in the UK and I taught in, um, back home. I've actually worked in IMU, Monash and UM. I would say uh, Taylor students are nice sponge. They are nice. Yeah. Yeah. You have character or, or yes, but overall they are on the nice side. Uh. Yeah. Okay. I think <laughs> I leave it like that. I think it's, I'm not the best judge. Uh. I don't live with them. I don't go out with them. All this thing, uh, makan, you know. You best you ask uh, tombs people, ask more than one, so you get different perspective. Yeah. How can I become the best doctor or become an outstanding doctor? Okay, good question. Great one. So that depends on how you define success. Yeah. How to define success? Success. Do you mean you earn the most compared to other people? Success, you mean the, you, you are the most famous one compared to other people? The best doctor means you operate something fastest or you use someone something to measure. You find that if you use this yardstick, yardstick uh, you will soon be overtaken on, even if you achieve the best. Or either, you, there can only be one best. Uh. There, there can be many, many good. Yeah, one best. Now, the yardstick that you measure, I think, how do you define success? I would, my my own experience is this. Uh, the best success is defined by your contentment and your joy within. If you find that you don't have to show people already, uh, you are doing good for your uh, patient, you are not worried about comparing yourself to others. You go out, you have, you have a worthy purpose to fulfill. Doesn't matter what you do, you're a primary care physician in clinic. You go there doing purpose and you go to the hospital working out a purpose. You have made it. So you are the best. Now, also, I mean, family, you know, you're a good family, you are the best. Okay. So, uh, okay. My answer too powerful, is it? Suddenly the thing off. <laughs> Hopefully, if you, I haven't satisfied, you feel free to follow up. Huh? I'm only too happy to answer uh, all your questions. What's your strongest motivation pursuing this career? I told you, uh, I didn't have much on uh, uh, when I was starting off. Uh, but I think looking back, uh, if I am to make friends with myself, uh, some... Uh, 20 over years ago, I would say good job. You actually uh, re maintain a um, maintain a pure heart, you know, because I never set out to be uh, to be famous. You know, I, I was never set out to want to beat people, want to be want to um, want to become a, a famous doctor. Using this as an end, uh, I mainly want to do good in my own way yeah in my own way so um uh, you know which leads i'm not uh, i'm going to say a few positive attributes that makes a you um, makes a doctor's life comfortable but in no way i'm implicating all this i have it myself huh? i don't know i cannot see myself but in my experience is uh, if you um are that kind of person who um are flexible, you know, who can put others' needs above your own. You are comfortable not not um, not uh, uh, having your program like that today. Not eating this sort of food. Not going. Uh, not having your own time, certain amount of time. But put patients' need ahead of yourself. And if you have enough self control, you know, you you going a bit late today is okay. 
you still have time, you look, look at the positive side. And if you're comfortable uh, be beside people, not necessarily communicating with them, but a bit among them, and um, you are um, you are easy uh, with uh, people in uh, also you uh, see others need in their suffering you know and see the effect of time and your work in making them better I think you'll be comfortable you'll be comfortable uh, so um, that will drive you on that will serve as a constant uh, quiet stream that drive you on you know, uh, you don't need uh, to ha to have adrenaline a high. You know, uh, the doctor's high. Yeah? It's, 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 you only see in a, in a, in Netflix. Uh, you know, the, the the most satisfying career as doctor is a daily kind of you can say daily grind, but daily quiet, uh, quiet service, and uh, which I think you find contentment within. You don't need to seek it out. Uh. So, I mean, I don't know whether it's clear now, it's a bit abstract, but uh, what's my strongest motivation is to live a good life. Uh. So, uh, hey. <clears throat> does taking A levels make your medical studies more understandable, easier to cope? It's supposed to be harder than more pre-U. Uh, no, no, fixed, not necessarily, you know, not necessarily. If you do foundation, uh, <clears throat> some, of, some of them, we haven't studied systematically, but some of them coming through foundation, some of Australian matriculation, <clears throat> they do equally well or even better. It, it doesn't depend on what course you do. Like, it depends on what sort of person you are, how much focus you are. If, even if you forget most things, uh, which is very unlikely, like after you take your A-level or some of Australian matriculation, you forget most things you learn. It's time for you. There's time for you to pick up. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's like a fresh start. Is meds required to pursue medicine? Not strictly required. You can see the entry requirement. Meds or physics, you need one of those. If you have no meds, you take physics, that's fine. If you have no physics, you have to take meds. Uh, yeah. How would you describe a successful doctor? So it's good that you are, you are now thinking about that. So I say, um, how do you define success? The joy that you have within you. Yeah. yeah? Even if you are you are a medical officer in clinic they are done so they call it chronic medical officer a bit of derogatory term you get don't quite promoted but if you're serving the patient in need you go home happy joy we look up to you really get my respect you're the most successful so it, it depends on how you define it within okay which one is more studying local or overseas in terms of career okay uh, depends. If you want to get, I, I give. Uh, it's quite a there are a lot to say about this, uh, but I, I give a starting point answer. Depends on what you want. If you um you find that staying close to your family is more more worthwhile, or making a difference in your country, people more so far they're still. Lots of difference to be made uh, in the Malaysian population. Is your country more of the far? Staying local is the one. Yeah? If you want to get the cutting edge technology in the West, you know, and uh, kind of join the elite, join the uh, forefront group, US, UK, of course, you go to those countries. Uh, yeah, they get access to those technology, to those development a bit faster than Malaysia. Yeah. But worth value is defined differently, you see. I I trained in Australia, I went to UK specialized, I decided to come back for family reasons and uh, I'm I don't regret, you know, that I define value this way. Yeah, I've a lot of my compatriot has uh, a lot more success. You want to measure things. Yeah. Do I have the same amount of joy? I don't know. How much studying should we be expecting in medical school? Uh, how much studying? Quite a lot. Lah. <laughs> Do you study all day? No. Lah. I see I see your some people having uh, lots of life, you know. I don't know how they get so much life. If you plan your study very uh, smartly, you can... Uh, you, now, two things. 
I, I tell you now, so assuming some of you will come into, most of you are coming to medicine, I tell you, because I tell uh, people, and first day of them coming to year three, two things in medicine, your studying then will be manageable. Don't swat, you know, what is swat? Don't go and lay things back, go and go and lay back, lay back. until two weeks before your exam, you go and study 24 hours a day, it won't work in medicine. You stress out. You find that it's impossible. You have to study a lot. Each day, just recap a little bit, a little bit, a little bit build up. You know, whatever you learn, especially in clinical year, you see a patient, you'll remember one oh, of no, these patients get sick like that. Nah. Wow. And then you look, oh, how, why? Is it, oh, it's described here. It's, you see it there. Oh, it's described in the lump. You see, the, oh, the lump feels like this. You remember, you know, go home and study. Make sure you get the thing reinforced. After you reinforce, you will remember. It's very different compared. You oh, I seen it. I wait until three weeks before exam. Oh, I want to recall what I see. Everything crammed together. Not a good study method. So if you if you do consistently every day, you find that you don't have to study very much. Huh? First strategy. Second one, the power of group. You find that. Huh? If you feed into each other in four, not only in terms of study, you test each other, also you get win one, you know. What's win? Win tells you the exam question will be like that, you no know, past questions like that. You get those strategy. Yeah, two things consistency and power of group. Remember this. Then you'll find that studying is manageable. Trust me on this. Do you have any advice or which medical school to attend? <laughs> okay, I passed that. <laughs> you, you, of course, I would. I I would like you all to come to Taylor's. Uh, uh, that's my bias. Uh, that's nothing neutral. It's Taylor because Taylor is better than the other medical school. We would like <laughs> to think so. Uh, it's, it's um. What are the top medical school people think now? Of course, IMU is the most established. Monash is you no. Know, it has an overseas curriculum and some advantage. Final year, you go Australia. <laughs> Yeah, final year, you get to go to Australia for three months for geriatrics. I work in Monash. Uh, I'm talk talking about private. Uh, Taylor's uh, is up and coming. Why? Because, you know, our graduates get a very good report. Yeah. And uh, you you also need to consider practical value. La. In Taylor's, um, our hospital are all around Klang Valley. But soon we'll be expanding, you know, we'll be using Hospital Ipo. We are given Hospital Ipo. Hospital Ipo is one of the best teaching hospital, I think if not the one of the best teaching hospital in Malaysia. It has a lot of CME for doctor. We don't want to miss that. So uh, we are planning to use it, but uh, you just pray that like, we get a smooth sailing in uh, negotiating. But we are given by uh, this hospital by the Ministry of Health. So uh, we are in the process of uh, we're planning but there are, there are different factors that decide whether we can go in or not. So we are not going to take things for granted, but we're really hopeful that we can have a mutually um, beneficial relationship. Okay. So Taylor's, um, you know, I'm here representing Taylor's. Uh, you um, want to get, say, uh, of course, if you uh, have a means to go to public university, UM is the most established, fees much lower, uh, UKM, USM, you know, they are much more est established. You know? What happens exactly to a doctor if the doctor is sued when working in a hospital? Okay. Now, um, now, if you work in a hospital as a houseman MO, you are automatically covered under the system. You work as a team. So, uh, when the patient sue, they are suing the system. A good thing about you working in a hospital is there are layers above you. You are a houseman. Usually the box doesn't stop at you. The MO make decision and especially the they have to take the ultimate responsibility. So the whole team, if they find that, uh, if let's say the problem is obviously you, uh, you, you cut the wrong limb, you use the uh, needle and inject the wrong drug or whatever, but the whole, whole system need to be responsible but there will be some penalty on you the thing is that you alone don't need to be the sole person who bear the responsibility that is the um, situation when you work in the ministry of health hospital if you are a specialist working in private hospital it's different you are the only one 
you are the independent practitioner. So different. How long is the working hours during housemanship? The latest working hour, if you talk about Malaysia, is uh, reduced now, you know. It's, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 50 hours. 40, 50 to 52 hours. They work shift now. Used to be a lot longer. Used to be on call. Now, when I was in UK, I was on call one in five. It worked, I worked seven, 72 hours per week. You know, uh, in Malaysia, I think it's 48, 52. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to say, oh, those good old days, uh, we are, used to work much harder. No, I think I think the intensity is the same or even even higher here. So uh, hard work, but I think it not, it isn't, uh, isn't as long as before. I think 48 to 52 hour you may I, I, if you want the exact info i can get back you can email me i can get back to you on that um yeah that's the average uh, is it going to change i don't think so it's gonna it's now now being pushed down to quite reasonable now you know the average office working hour is 40 hours a week 40 hours 48 50 hours is uh is okay uh, Right, it's okay. You get paid by the hours or so. You know? So yeah. All okay. Right. Um, yep. Thank you, Professor Lai. And that's all the questions and all the time that we have for today. So if anyone has any further questions, I think Professor Lai mentioned before you guys can email him. So Professor Lai, you can put your email in the chat box later on. And so for those of you that have any questions, you guys can personally email Professor Lai just to clarify further. Okay, that's my email there in the chat box. Can you all see? Yeah. Yeah, you can email me. Welcome to email me. Or you can, you, I mean, Taylor has a, has a system where you search my name, you can find my email, that kind of thing. But you, you have it here. Now, I'm very happy to answer you. I mean, I, I think it's important for me to actually pass on the info. Uh, I'm very happy to, to kind of answer any sort of question you like. And, and I'm the proviso that some of those answers are only my personal view. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Professor Lai. All right. So moving on now, the feedback form will be sent in the chat box. So don't forget to fill that out because certificates will only be given to those that have filled in the forms. So by filling out the feedback form, you can have an input in TLPMC's future events and let us know where we can improve on. So we hope that this event has helped you gain more insight about the field of medicine, answered your questions and clear any doubts that you may have had and hopefully build some confidence and motivation that you need to attend, attain this dream. Furthermore, as displayed on your screens right now, you'll be able to see TLPMC's social media pages, which you guys can scan the QR codes and check it out to keep up with our clubs, events and activities. Now, lastly, before I dismiss everyone for tonight, I just want to take a minute and bring to your attention the other events that we have lined up for the rest of this week in line with medic, um, dive into many careers. So there's been a slight change in the dates and the topics for the day due to some clashes in our speaker schedules. But as part of the events, we'll be hosting the following events as stated on the screen throughout the rest of this week. Right, so tomorrow on the 20th, we will be visiting Taylor's anatomy lab, which Professor Lai showed us just now. You guys will physically get to visit the lab and have a look around. And then on the 20th, the night of the 20th, we'll be having a talk about dentistry. 21st will be neurosurgeon and neurosurgery and neurology. On the 22nd, psychiatry. 23rd, to close the event we have pharmacy. You guys can scan the QR codes there and sign up for the events if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for joining us here tonight on a weeknight, nonetheless, and we hope that you've enjoyed yourself and learned something from today's session. So thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.